Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 12 video tutorial. Now you see on the screen here, what we're going to create is what I refer to as text art. It's taking some text and actually creating it with a really nice photograph, any photograph you want to use, and you use that for the background to make that into the art form of the text. This works really great if you're doing something like a, a, a baby picture layout or something. You can just let your imagination run free. But I'm going to show you the steps we use to create this text art. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to just delete this layer or this whole image actually. We'll just uh, come up here and we're going to delete this layer here. And once I get this deleted, let me just uh, close this out here. And we're not going to save this. We're just going to start over. Okay, so here is the picture that I chose to use. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the picture that you want to use. Again, it could be any picture you want. I would recommend in starting this tutorial when I looked at this, I thought, well, let's go ahead and we're going to change this a little. We're going to crop it a little bit because I just want to use these, these pedal uh, boats down here. I don't really need this background in here at all. So the first thing we're just going to use our crop tool. We're just going to crop it out here just to try to make it a little uh, more rectangle looking. There we go. Now what we have to do at this point is, now that we have this cropped out, is we're going to create a new blank file. Go new, blank file. And we're simply going to call this text. We can see here that the size is 2048 by 1152. Now this size is not set in stone, folks. You can change this to any size you want based on whatever pictures you're using. And you can, you know, customize it based on how you want to set the picture up behind the text. The resolution at 240 is fine. The, um, the uh, color RGB is fine. And this is normally set to white, your background contents, but we're going to set it to transparent. Simply click OK, and that's going to give you your transparency. What we want to do next is we want to add some text to this transparency. Let's click on the text. And what you're going to do here is find a, a font that is a bold font. I use the Gil Sans Ultra Bold. It just seems to work for me. And it is regular, and the color is black. Center Justified. And we're going to do 75 points. Now, if in fact you only see up to 72, all you got to do is click in there, backspace it, hit 75, and enter. Now, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and draw a text box on our screen. Draw pretty big here, right about there. And now, what we're going to do is we are going to add our text. Voting USA. All right, so that is the text that I used before, and that's what I'm going to go with now. And what we're going to do now is simply click the checkbox. We can see now that we have this Boating USA on our transparent layer, and now we're ready to go ahead and introduce our picture into this actual project file. Now, just by playing around with this and learning the ins and outs, I wanted to show you an easy way to do this. If we take this picture and just copy it and overlay it on here, I can already tell you it's going to be too large. You have to resize it. So instead of going through all that headache, it's easier to look at the image, go to resize and image size. And remember we created this and I told you this width and this height. Write that down when you create your transparent layer. So I wrote down 2048 by 1152. Click OK. Click on the picture you want to use that you're going to be laying that text over. This is the picture that we're going to be using for our artwork in our text. What you want to do here is go to Image, Resize, Image Size, and in here change the width and the height to match the transparent layer that you created. It's going to make it a lot easier on you. That's what we wanted. That's why I'm teaching you, right? I want you to do things the easy way. Click OK. Now you can hold your Alt key down, your Options key, and you can 
just use your scroll wheel and move this up or down if you feel like it. You don't have to because it is the right size now. Let's do select all by clicking under select all, or if you want to use the keyboards. I find the keyboard shortcuts to be so much easier. Just do command or control A, then command or control C, that would copy it. Go back to our text that we have on this uh, transparent layer and do a command or control V, and that's gonna paste it. And now you see how this lined up perfectly with this layer here. So if I take this off and show you, and turn it back on, you can see it's a perfect size. It's a perfect match. That's why you want to resize that image. The next thing we're going to do is take this and we're going to use a grouping method. Now, if you've never grouped before, what the idea of grouping is, is grouping the a layer with the layer below it. So we are going to simply do control or command G. You're going to group it. So right away, you see now that the both are becoming the, you know, the picture underneath is becoming the artwork for our text. And that's what this is called, text art. It's a very nice way to do it. Makes a great conversation piece. Now, we see here a couple of problems. First of all, the text is actually too high. So click on the text box. And I don't know if we can, re no, we're not going to resize that. We're just going to pull the text box down. And we'll put it right towards the middle here. And now you're saying, Jack, that looks all well and cool and everything, and that's pretty good, but the picture is not really lined up where you want it. So if you click on the layer with the picture on it, now you can click your mouse inside of one of the letters, and you can actually move the picture around, and you can actually get that boat moved around, those little pedal boats we showed you earlier. And, you know, you can put it pretty much wherever you want it so you can see them and get the idea of the boats themselves. And if you hold that command or control key down, double click it, it will select the font again. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because now I'm going to do a command or control D and deselect that. That's okay. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to change that font size and bring that up a little bit. So let's bring it up to 150 and see where we get. That's a little too big. Let's take it back to 100. And that looks pretty good. Hit your enter key. Hit the checkbox. And you can now see that the font is much larger. Again, you can play with the font size based on the total screen size that you have going for yourself. And, you know, I like the font to be a little bigger because obviously I want to see more of the picture behind it. So now I can move this picture around once again. And these are really, really nice to do these for vacation pictures I found. You know, you can put on there um, Hawaii, Tahiti, whatever. And, um, and, and put a picture of, you know, the places you went behind it. It is just really, really cool. The next thing we're going to do is, this is all done. So we'll click back on the text. We'll just click off of here. And what we're going to add now is, I want to add a gradient to the overall picture. Because this looks kind of boring. So let's add a new layer. Pull this layer down to the bottom, because that's going to be your final background layer. Click on your gradient under the draw tools, click on gradients. And then down at the bottom, you can click the little pull down menu and a screen's going to pop up and give you the default gradients. Now there's some in here and we can talk one day. I'm going to have to have a show or, or do a, do a video on how to create gradients. We're not going to do that today. Well, all I'm going to do today is show you how you could use a gradient. So we are going to use this orange, um, yellow orange so you see orange yellow orange I'll double click on that and you can really start anywhere down here it's going to show you the radius or the radial you can have it through the middle a burst in the middle you can have an angle gradient a reflected gradient or a diamond gradient let's try the diamond gradient we're going to start at the very top corner and this is just my way of doing it there's many ways you can start from the middle or whatever I start from the top corner, I'm going to go down to the bottom corner, and I'm just going to leave that go. Now you can see that we have that orange, yellow, orange on our actual picture. Now that looks okay, but it doesn't have that overall effect of the one I showed you when we started this video. So let's go ahead and click on the text. We're going to go to Effects. And if you click on the Styles tab at the top, we've got Filter, Styles, Effects. 
And on the pull down menu, if it's not on there, click on bevels. We're going to add a bevel. This gives it that, that 3D or 2D look like it's coming off the paper. I really like these looks. And all you got to do is just drag it over and you can drop it on top of there. Or you can just right click on it and say add the document. Add the document and you'll see it actually pops up there. Once you get that bevel put on there, that's it. Let's go back to layers at the bottom. Again, you have layers. Now, what you want to do with this is actually take the take the FX here on the layer. Actually, we don't want that one up there. All right. So on the text itself, double click on the FX. And this is where we can play around a little bit with those that actual style that was put onto our text. We can bring the bevel up a little bit. We can bring it back down. We can add a drop shadow, which I truly like to add. I always like to add a drop shadow just to give it that little bit of effect. Now, if you get too much, you're going to get, it's just not going to look right. So be careful of how much drop shadow you put on it. Just a little bit of drop just to give it that 3D fill. You can bring the distance out a little bit. You can drop the distance if you want to make it look like it's further off the page. That looks pretty good. You can add a glow. And you can play around with these folks. Inner glows is the inside of the letter. Outer glow is the outside edge of the letter. I tend to use more outer glow than in just because I like the effect. It's all what you like. Again, you can pull this up a little bit and give it a little bit of a view there on it. You can add stroke color to it if you wish, but I would recommend if you're using a glow, do not use the stroke. If you're using a stroke color, do not use a glow color. Click OK. There is our final product. It is a 3D, kind of a 3D, 2D fill, whichever you want to uh, present that as. But it's just a really nice way to give your text some really nice artwork to it. And you're doing it all just with clicking the mouse, folks. It's very, very easy to do. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate that. I'm very humbled uh, with how many of you out there are watching these videos and learning along with me. And uh, it's good to be um, back in the saddle and creating some more uh, Photoshop Elements videos for you. If you feel so inclined, you can check out the... Um, I have a learning site set up at jtclearning.com. Click on that, look at the courses on top, and then click on Photography. There's a Photoshop Elements course there that you can uh, you can take, and, and it's, it's easy. I mean, it's just a straight-through video course, so check that out if you feel so inclined. Uh, if not, please go to jackstechcorner.com and use my Amazon link whenever you're buying anything from Amazon, anything, folks, at all. It really greatly helps you shows out, and I really appreciate uh, your continued support to me and uh, what I'm producing for you. So thanks so much, and I'll see you back here in the next video with Jack's Tech Corner with more Photoshop elements. Thanks. I'll see you then.